know, kind of had an edge about you. Some of the Pat McAfee comments yesterday got a lot of attention. I mean, it seemed like the team also played with a little bit of an edge. It was different today. What, what's the root of that? Um, there's probably a lot that goes into it, but that's the way you got to play the game of football. That's the mentality that we have to have. You know, we, we know that we want to be playing our best football. We also know what was at stake. You, know, you don't win this game, you have no chance to go to Indianapolis and play the Big Ten Championship. And that's, that's, that's real. And uh, we've had that approach here for a few weeks now, more than that. And i, I got to say, I, I thought the crowd was awesome. Awesome. I, I thought our guys played with great passion. I thought the, the two of them just you know, played off each other the entire game. I think the fact that they had to go to a silent cadence didn't make a difference in this game. It certainly did. They, they tried to clap early. They couldn't. They went to the silent cadence, and that made a huge difference in the game. So you know, give, give the fans so much credit. I thought they brought great energy. I thought during Caleb's return, it was one of the loudest I've had it, I've heard it in a while. And, uh, but, but our guys just played with the chip today, and that's the way you got to play the game of football. Over to the left, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Ryan, are you heading to Vegas right after this? Since you guaranteed a punt return for a touchdown and came to fruition, what did you see there? Was there ever a question of him not returning in terms of injury or the risk reward there? Yes. Oh, yeah. We go, we, we take a. We take everything into consideration. And, uh, we made the decision a couple weeks ago that we felt Caleb, uh, well, really, about well, midway through the season, you know, after the Oregon game, we just felt like Caleb needs to be more involved, make more an impact on the games. I think that what's been happening on defense, you know, has kind of shown that, that that's happened. And then we felt like, as you know, as a punt returner, he, he was dynamic with the ball in his hands. Um, you know, he. When he was in high school, I saw a lot of it in color. You know, I, I felt like he was like running back here at Ohio State. And when you're when you're in the, the special teams, uh, you know, meetings every day and putting the work in that these guys are putting in, it's a great example to the other players that you, know, you may not see the results, but if you trust the process, good things are going to happen. And now we've had three weeks in a row. We've had a punt you know, walk, and then uh, and, and now a punt return for a touchdown. Those are big plays and, and matchup games. Those are the things that we got to have. I felt like we made some good personnel changes there. Um, and you know, Brian Hartline deserves a lot of credit. He's the one that heads up the punt return. And you know, he and Rob Keys. I mean, it's everybody. We all coach it. You know, Tim Wall coaches yeah. the, the um, you know the Jammers, which I thought Denzel and uh, Jermaine did a great job on that play. I'm going to go back and watch the film, but there was great effort on that play. Uh, and so that, that's one of those things we've we got to make sure that we celebrate the efforts on, on those plays because those are game-changing plays. And, uh, but, but give Cato, you know, all the credit he deserves. Uh, you know, I felt like we had a chance to return it based on what had happened earlier in the game uh, if, the, if the Jammers gave us a chance. Uh, the punt was a little short. I said, oh, man, here we go again. We've had a lot of short punts. It bounced off the turf, and Caleb's, you know, decides he's gonna he's gonna return it. Made a few guys miss, and then just some great effort on that play to go turn good into great. Again, a game changing play. Over to the right, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Brian, at the end of the game, offensively for you, that was an interesting sequence. Trey goes down to the one yard line, and you decided to run two plays anyways to score. What was that decision all about? Was there anything to that? Well, and you know, at the end of the game, uh, we're in a four minute drill, uh, like you saw. In the Penn State game, you know, we say we call that downtime, which means you know, once we get the first down in that moment, we feel like the game's probably over. Uh, you know, he scored it free and it brought it all the way down to the one yard line. I think maybe it triggered like at the last second, oh boy, I'm going to get down here. Uh, so we didn't have to put our defense back on the field. Uh, then we decided to at least build 45 seconds off the clock. We're on the one yard line. We just felt like we were going to put an exclamation point in the win by Penn State. Uh, over to the left, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Right. This is, there's a lot of talk about Indiana being the most explosive passing offense in play since they don't game. What can you say about the game plan Jim put together or just what the defense did that seemed to rattle uh, Kurt for a all day? Yeah, I felt like the, the plan going in was excellent, but uh, and, I, and I thought the defensive staff did a great job with it. I felt like uh, Jim uh, had a great plan. I thought Tim and Matt both did an excellent job all week. I thought Larry's guys played with their hair on fire. I thought James did a nice job. So I think everybody on the defensive side deserves credit. But like we talked about this week, this game is, is played by players, not coaches. It's about players. And, and our players play hard today. And 
I felt like the, you know, the defensive line won the line of scrimmage. I felt like we got after um, you know, their offensive line in terms of getting to the backfield. I thought our, our, our guys in the secondary covered well because you know, we knew they were going to take shots down the field. We still have you know, too many of these pass interference calls that we got to get cleaned up. Uh, that's just the truth. But, uh, and, I, and I thought the linebackers, at least it looked like on, on film, were timing up the blitzes really well to get into the backfield. Uh, over to the right, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Right, I know you want to celebrate a win like this as much as possible, second top five win of the season, but now comes the game that a lot of the people in this roster came back with, including some guys in this room. How do you quickly make that turn around and get ready for the Michigan game next week? Yeah, uh, well, it's just that. You know, we know we need to at least celebrate and enjoy the win, but it's, it's not going to be a late night. Uh, you know, we all need to get to bed. We need to get our rest. We need to uh, enjoy. You can't just you know have a top five win like this and just move on. Uh, the minute it hit triple zeros on that clock, it was on the team up north, on the rivalry right game. We know what's coming uh, and, and how important this week is for everybody in the state of Ohio, Buckeye Nation. Most importantly, our team and, and our obligation to, to play really well next week and win that game. But we also need to make sure you we know, take a deep breath and recognize the things that will happen today. You know, we'll do that tomorrow during our champions meeting, celebrate with the guys who played really well, and then move on because, you know, it's easy just to move on, but there's a lot of work that gets put into a win like this. It's a top five win. So uh, we'll get some good rest tonight, make sure uh, we get to bed early, and then we'll wake up tomorrow and make sure we get back to work. Folks, we're going to do two more questions with Coach Day, and then we're going to bring Caleb up for a handful of questions, and then Will. And I, I do want to share that uh, uh, Will completed 80% of his passes for the sixth time this season. That's a single season and a career record. No other Ohio State quarterback's ever done it. Spencer Holbrook, Clutter Monroe. Yeah, on that subject, Ryan, Will started, I think, was 14 of 14 and was really seeming to spin it. What are you seeing from him in his preparation that makes him get off to these starts? I mean, whether it's you know, early in season 10 or 10, I think he's had three or four of those, and then today 14 of 14. What do, you, what do you see from that that makes him so good early? I, I think Buckeye Nation is now seeing, uh, after you know, 11 games, uh, this, this guy is, is a winner. He's tough. He cares about his teammates. He's a leader. Uh, he's, you know, there was a tough spot this week when we lost Seth in practice. And he, along with the offensive line, Donnie, Josh, um, you know, really just raised you know, the spirits of everybody. And that's, that's hard to do when you lose somebody who makes such an impact like Seth. Uh, but he's got great resilience, great toughness. He's the heart and soul of our team. Um, but, but there's more to it than just will. You know, we look at the way Travion ran today. I, I thought Travion played his tail off today. How hard he ran, how physical he ran. I thought Glenn Sean had a, you know, some good runs. But you know, Carson Hinsman stepping up and, and playing center, and Austin. You know, so um, there's, there's a lot of things that we need to celebrate. And after a game like this, and you feel like you know you want to make sure you're recognizing those guys. But you know, like somebody said, it's going to be on in the next game quickly. We got to learn from it, keep growing, because there is some things coming out of this game that you know. I wasn't very happy with, you know, especially the way you know we're down in the red zone. Don't get in early on. You know, we, we have a turnover there in the red zone. I mean, that, that could have been a whole different score at halftime. You know, that was that, that was not good. But uh, we were resilient. The crowd just kept swinging. I mean, it was awesome. You could just feel the crowd was like, "There's no way this thing's going to go any other way." And and that's kind of how it all played out. Final question for Coach Dave, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. You just kind of talked about it a little bit, but I made your storyline with the offensive line coming into this game. How do you think it held up? Uh, run game wasn't spotty, no stats. Uh, you know, against, against yeah, well, you know, we can look at the number of plays. I mean, they, they were huddling, we were huddling. We ended up with 55 plays on a short field. So, you know, the numbers aren't going to be as gaudy as maybe like we talked about in the past. We're talking about 55 plays. So that's 30 less plays than we've seen. So the numbers will look that way. So I'll go off of what I felt I saw on the field. I felt like guys were getting after it. I felt like, you know, some, some of the plays that guys were just straining. In this style of defense, there is people moving every play and shifting and uh, changing the fronts. And, and there were times where there were free guys in the hole. I thought running backs. Uh, you know, ran down hell, but the game plan was that you know if there might be a couple free guys, and you know near the near the line of scrimmage, but we were going to come off the ball and not play hesitant, trying to figure all that out. I think they played hard, and I thought they protected well when when uh, Wilson, you know, with pass protection. Coach, thank you very much.